irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee, right here on LA Talk Radio. Hey, what's going on, guys? Season 2, Keith Reza with my uh, trusty sidekick, Alan Lee. Yes, indeed. We're back uh, with a vengeance, and we're happy uh, to have all our fans listening in. So how you doing, Alan Lee? I haven't seen you in a while, man. Yeah, no, I, uh, I've i been, uh, uh, how shall I say, not real busy, but kind of busy, and, uh, you know, hitting all the amazing open mics all over town, all over the country, and, uh, you know, you know me, I don't, I don't care about making any money. I just love my art. Yeah. <laughs> so um, la- this season is different. Yeah. Last season we had a video podcast. Yes. Uh, we couldn't find sponsors to video podcast That's us. That's unfortunate. So now we're doing audio podcasts. Yeah, it's great. I don't think, I think this is, I think we're moving along, man. Yeah, and we have a great season. We have big names this season. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to tweet the show for like calling in numbers and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but uh, last season we had writers who I forgot we didn't really mention, but uh, who wrote the who jo- who wrote jokes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had Tony Alfano as a writer, Steve J B. Steve J B. Uh, Des what's Desarino? Was Desarino. that his name? Is it? He was a funny guy. He was the I blind guy. Yeah, the, the, the I love him. I think yeah. he's wonderful. And uh, we had Brock Powell. Brock was here. And because uh, I noticed on season one, we didn't mention any credits, and that's why season two we couldn't find any writers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love writers, and so I guess I don't want to be apologetic, but you've said it. We we love you out there, all you writers. So just uh, send in your jokes to Keith Reza on Facebook and Twitter. We are and tw- Twitter. We're tweeting right now. Uh, the yeah. number. We have a great guest. We have Fred Stoller coming in. Uh, he's actually calling in. He said he was stuck in traffic, but he said he'd give us a call. Um, I love Fred. He's one of the greatest stand-ups of all time. And uh, before we talk about Fred, I want to hear about Alan Lee's summer. What, what did you do? Did you go to New York at all? Uh, yes, I this summer I did go to New York, and I uh, visited my family. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, uh, my sister is very sweet. She's in real estate, and so she, uh, you know, does very well. Uh, and as you know, I'm the bad sheep in the family. She bought me a, uh, an iPhone. So I'm with Keith now, and he's, you know, helping me out uh, become iPhone literate. And I'm having a, a great time with my iPhone. And uh, I, I love New York. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I want to live there, but uh, I do love New York. So if the people in New York are tuning in, uh, you know, I love you. Uh, <laughs> Alan Lee loves you. All right, guys. So um, a little about this show is we, we – the show's not scripted. It's called Raise a Riffs because we just rift. We just talk, and if oh. it's funny, it's funny. If not, it's cool. But um, something that you guys don't know is I'm on the computer, and I see a list of all these old contacts from the previous show. So I'm just thinking if it gets boring, we could call Paul Waltson <laughs> <laughs> or Peter Scott. Wow. Uh, Mike Graham. You know, but uh, before we bring we talk about Fred, uh, I, I, want, I want to talk to Alan about sure. this. Um, Alan, did you hear Charlie Sheen uh, is HIV positive? You know, I I'm a little behind the curve on that because I have always followed Charles Sheen in rehab, <laughs> and it hurts me to to find out that on top of uh, some of his, his rehab challenges. Now you tell me that uh, he's HIV positive. Is that correct? Yeah, he, uh, he wow. uh, came out a yeah. couple days ago yeah. on, the, on the TV. Yeah. Well, he's sexually act- very active. Uh, maybe you... you yeah, you, he's very... He, there's a rumor that Charlie Shane once had uh, sex with a different woman every night for mm. a whole year. Wow. In the 80s. It's, uh, doesn't surprise me. It, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. Because it's, hey, and you know what else I found out? I found out uh, yeah. Emilio Estevez is Charlie oh. Shane's brother. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake! You didn't know that. Now I knew that. Oh, I, yeah. I, yeah. I just found that out. Yeah, isn't that funny? What, a, what a family. Yeah. The, the, I guess a family that has a lot of sex out is a, is a family that stays together. That, that came out wrong. I tried anyway. Fuck it. Well, I think Emilio. <laughs> I don't yeah. even. I think if you ask people. 
like a normal guy on the street, like, sure. hey, do you know who Emilio Estevez is? They'll be like, no. And then you'd be like, hey, do you know who Charlie Sheen is? They'll be like, yes, Tiger Blood. You know? Oh. Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. His roast was actually really good, too. The, the, I thought it was one of the funniest roasts. Oh, the, oh I love roasts. The Comedy Central I roast of roast. Charlie Sheen. I'm going to take a look at that. When Speaking I get of roasting, you know, the Comedy Store does roasts on Tuesday. Well, now that you bring that up, and since you are the champion, I, I was very impressed. I was there that night rooting for you, and you kicked everyone's ass and <laughs> I, walked away with the gold medal. I, there was no medal. It was more like, you know. Sort of a gold. Uh, what? Well, I guess there was no gold, really, but you walked away. With your head held up high. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess I, I'm like a two and one right now. I lost to um, Ashley Barnhill. Well, you like Ashley, I think, maybe probably as as a as a, as a person and as an attractive gal, and uh, maybe that might have you might have softened. I think you were you went a little soft on her. Oh yeah, you got to take it easy on the ladies, you know, especially oh, yeah. if you want to sleep with them. Ooh, <laughs> well. <laughs> but um, so Fred's going to be calling in in a couple minutes. Yeah. A little about Fred Stoller, guys. Uh, one, he was a huge stand-up in the 80s. Mm-hmm. He was on the 13th Young Comedian Special. That's correct. Which was hosted with uh, Dennis Miller. I uh, love Dennis. David Spade was on it. love David. Rob, Rob Schneider and oh, uh, Drake Sather. He was on it. And then uh, Fred's done some acting uh, and writing. He He's really has. known for his writing. Uh, he wrote for Seinfeld, and he wrote two books, one about writing for Seinfeld, and the other called Maybe We'll Have You Back, The Life of a TV Guest Star. Of a per- perennial TV guest star. Yeah. And I read it, and it was very funny. And, uh, I think it's I, hilarious. Yeah. It's, it's, you know what I like about that book? is Because like, if you want to do acting like me, people yeah. think you're either a superstar or you're not at acting. And the thing is, is there's a lot of guest spots going around. Oh my God! You know Without I mean? guest spots, I, I I don't know. The, you know, that's the whole point. I love I love the character people. Yeah, and see, that's why I think I love Fred so much because yeah. one, he's the greatest guy, and two, because he's struggling. He's showing you that hey, not everyone is a Brad Pitt in acting. You know what I'm sure, saying? Sure, sure. And I think that a lot of people don't get that. I think it's either... Either or. Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah. And Fred's actually calling right now. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Hey, what's up, Fred? Hey, Keith. How you doing? Good. Thanks for doing the show, buddy. Are we live? Are we doing it now? You're on. Are, you're are on. You connect us? Uh, yeah. Fred. We're live and connected. Fred, this, this is Alan. You met Alan at Flappers. Yes, we did in the uh, in the lobby. Yes, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. How so, are you, Fred? Good. So what do you have, a studio there? We're right here in this room with a microphone, two microphones, four, four yeah, microphones. we have a studio, <laughs> and it's in Sherman Oaks. Yes. Wow. I, think, yeah. I love Sherman. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, yeah, you know, yeah. exciting. <laughs> God. Well, I'm thrilled to be on your podcast. So you're smart. You only do it once in a while. You don't do it every week, huh? Well, Thank I, you. I think every week is just too hard. Yeah. I know, Fred, you also have I, I learned it. Yeah, you have a podcast every week, right? Not anymore. Uh, oh, too he, much. he could give us too a hard. Break. Did you stop? I got burnt out. Oh, are you still going to do it, or are you just taking a break? Uh, taking a break. Uh, Alan, about Fred's podcast. Um, yes, I was actually on it. I wasn't really on it. I was just on it as a coincidence because it was Norm's birthday. And I called Norm, and Norm's like, hey, call Fred Stoller. I was like, okay. So I called Fred, and they were on, Norm like got me on the podcast. Oh, that's so, cool. And then Fred was like, Fred couldn't say my last name. He was like, it's Reza. Ra- it's, yeah, it's Reza, Fred. <laughs> oh. So you were a drop-in on Fred, and, and Fred was, uh, you know. Well, I don't think Fred knew I was calling. Yeah, that, that's, what I'm, that's uh, what I mean. <laughs> so Norm's going to want a link of this. Do you, do you, does this podcast have links? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll tweet it when it comes out and stuff. I'm tr- okay, okay, good. I'm trying to get him to come on the show, but, you know, he never answers his phone, so. But, but he answered that, yeah, that one time at the with my podcast. <laughs> well, he, I think he answered it because it's his birthday, and he was just like, oh, I need to pick it up before I leave <laughs> all these voicemails. But I love him. Right, they pile up, yeah. Yeah. So, Fred, I have, a, I have a couple questions sure. for you. Uh, sure. Um, we have your book r- right here called Maybe We'll Have You Back. And uh-huh. 
and we wanted to ask you a couple questions about it. First of all, sure. first of all, I heard you got sued from Kramer, the real Kramer, not Michael Richards, but yeah, yeah. Can, do you want to explain a little about that? I, I you know, I, I there was a chapter in it about taking his bus tour, and sure. I knew him sort of, and he heard it, he heard I needed a place to stay, so he said. You could stay with me, but you got to be the special guest on my Kramer Reality Tour, which is a, a bus that drives around uh, Manhattan, and he shows things, and a guy runs up and down screaming expressions from the show. It's just so stupid. And um, <laughs> so I just wrote how stupid no, it was. Yeah. It's free speech. Sure. And, and he made up that I said that he was taunting gays, which I didn't yeah. say. He just twisted it because the guy screamed out, the village where the gays are, not that there's anything wrong with it, so he tried to make it sound like I said he was sticking his head out, taunting gays. It made no sense, but I had to get a lawyer and seven months of nonsense. Wow. Well, that's, see, that's unbelievable. You could have just called me. I would have had my mom represent you for free. Oh, that's right. Your mom's an attorney. Yeah. Your, mother's, your mother's a lawyer? Yeah. So. And now I know. God, well, <laughs> Look at you. You hopefully it... someone will see me soon because maybe she'll help. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, no, I... you got uh, you got sued for a million dollars, right? A million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, they threw it out. You know, the judge just said this is stupid, and he tried to appeal. Uh, and he he threw out his lawyer. He tried appealing himself, but. Yeah, I guess a lawsuit, even if it's stupid, you, you, you know, he sued the publisher. So we had to just, you know, deal with this nonsense. It's a lot of ridiculous lawsuits, yeah. Well, it seems like all they had to do was just read the book to find out, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a very good point, but it's not as simple as that. You can't go, hey, read the book. you got to do litigation. Where you, go, you know, like I had friends go, just show up at your book and point to the page. Yeah. But you got to do what's called litigation, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> they don't want to, the lawyer's got to show why it's frivolous, why he's a public figure, why, I didn't say he was taunted gay, so you got to write up this law, says this, and a oh whole bunch of stuff. Well, it, it was a very funny book, and the That's thing I was, I was saying about it before was, like, one of the reasons why I like you and respect you a lot is because you're, you're one of those guys who, like, they show, you because when people come to acting, they think you're either a Brad Pitt or something, you know, like you're you either made it or you don't. And you show the right. world, you show the world that I showed them that I'm not Brad Pitt. Yeah, <laughs> I showed them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you, 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 no, but but you show right. them. People, that, people argue. They think I am, but I have to show them. <laughs> no, with litigation, you show them their the ID. Imagine even through litigation. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's. that's about yeah, I show them. But thank you, Keith. <laughs> what was the, what was the thing that either you're Brad Pitt or you're not? Yeah, and you show them that you know what. Uh, I'm Fred Stoller, and I have a very successful career. You know what I mean? Indeed, like, I indeed. think people don't understand that. You know what I mean? That middle. I don't understand. They don't understand. <laughs> this is where my Asperger's gets in the way. <laughs> no, I don't understand that it's successful sometimes, but it's just I'm just saying it's a different light. Yeah, it's not the typical Hollywood story. It's just just a what? different experience. Well, let me say like. Because I do acting, I'm not. I don't have anything to show for it, but you do. So right. like, I'm very, you know, I'm very proud of you. You know what I mean? Like I would love to oh, be thank like, you. I would love to be like, hey, I've been on all these TV shows. You know what I mean? But I'm not. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like I mean it as a compliment. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. And um, you know, Fred did some writing as well. Yeah. I mention that because I wanted to get into that, but you go ahead. I want to get into that too. Okay. Writing. Uh, do you have any advice about how to write for a sitcom like Seinfeld? Well, no, no one should write for Seinfeld now because my uh. advice would be that don't write for Seinfeld because that show's over. <laughs> so my advice would be <laughs> try to write for a show that's on now. But. Uh, <laughs> Every show is different. It's uh, you got to write what's called a spec script to show your, your writing ability. That's right. I'm not trying to pursue that now, so I think just got to watch a lot of shows. And uh, my advice for writing, I learned from writing on Seinfeld, is 
don't try out ideas on people you think you're friends. You know, because they'll say, oh, that's not good. And, 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 and it, it might have been something they would have liked. There's a guy on Seinfeld, he pretends to be my mentor, but he go, no, nah, that's not good. And it turned out some of those ideas were good. Thank you. So did anyone it, it ever... all, what matters is the guy that says yes or no. Thank don't, you. Don't, don't do what I do where you try out jokes on people in the bar. Music to you my know, ears. You just got to have guts and, and, and try it out on the person who could say yes or no or the audience. Now, Fred, did any of the other co-writers uh, like try and take your ideas and stuff and like pull it off as, oh, hey, I wrote that, but when really you're like, no, I wrote that? No, because it was very isolated. Uh, it's not like other shows where there's a table, you all sit around. So they did, they were all trying to get their ideas on and no, no one really dealt with me. Ah. Uh. So, no, no one, there was just one guy that would kind of pretend he was giving me advice, but he was sabotaging me. He wasn't a good guy, but no one took any of my ideas, no. Um, yeah. And then uh, you were on the Young Comedian special, which I find fascinating, because that, I don't know if I've told you this, Fred, but you were the first stand-up I ever saw on TV from that. Because, because Get out of here, well... You just watched it, you turned on in the middle, because I wasn't the first one on it. Yeah, no, um, I was 12, and it was on the on demand, and my dad said, uh -huh. my dad said, Keith, watch this guy, and we turned, oh, on, turned on your so nice. And I remember, it just made me laugh, because uh, your joke was like, um, so I met a girl at this bar, and I was like, hey, you want to go back to my place? And she's like, you're not going to kill me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest joke in the world. So I watched it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and it, like honestly, I thought you were the funniest one on that thing. And oh no, no, it's funny because I'll hear David Spade or Rod Schneider interviewed. I go, "What was your big break?" They call the Young Comedian Special, and I go, "Wait, I was on that. That yeah. wasn't my big break." It, it seemed like it was though. It seemed like it got you no, really into known for really stand up. Maybe. I mean, people sort of, like 27 years ago, whenever it was on, something crazy. Um, but I'm saying they got Saturday Night Live and stuff. I mean, well, didn't you, you know. didn't you audition for Saturday Night Live? Not really. I, I, I met Al Franken once in New York, and I did some of my jokes, and he kind of, you know, said thank you and, you know, get this guy out of here. He doesn't do characters. So, didn't really, didn't really go further than that. And then I would ask someone, and they go, "You don't do characters, you know?" Because I think uh, you have to do, you know. Wait a minute, Norm doesn't do characters. No, he he, he started as a writer, and uh, interesting. But yeah, you got to, you know. I'm, I don't look, I don't seem too versatile. They think I'm just some depressed guy. <coughs> and I wonder why they think that. But so they go, he's a depressed guy. Oh yeah, put him on Saturday Night Live. But see, that's a character. Like depressed. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, you know, a guy that, uh, yeah, is sad. I, I could, I could see you on the weekend update. We're like, okay, here's uh, Fred Stoller, and then they'd be like, Fred, how was your day? And you could be like, oh. I went to a Seven Eleven and I bought a pen and I gave him a dollar and he's like, "Here's your penny." I was like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> wow, uh, maybe it's not too late to try to get on now. Yeah, you could totally. It's do. A good idea. I could try, but and you know, it's, it's all good as they say. Fred, we have a we have a Twitter question for you. Um, sure, sure. Uh, Fred, loved you in Dumb and Dumber. What was it like working with Jim Carrey? <laughs> Excuse me. Well. My scene wasn't with Jim Carrey. It was with a guy, Mike Starr, who punched me through the phone booth. So I'd assume working with Jim Carrey is fun, but I didn't work with him. Oh, so you never met him? Oh, I met him. I, I met him, you know, at some, I think, uh, maybe Yuck Yucks in Toronto a million years ago, and, and sometimes at the clubs, and he's always been a very nice guy. I think I think Very the question nice. I think the question was because like you were in a movie with Jim Carrey, so I think maybe they assumed you worked with him. Right, that's a, that's an honest assumption, but um, actually uh, he was on the set 
I got there a day early, and I just said hi to him. And I remember he had that funny tooth. I went, oh, that's a funny tooth. <laughs> and he's a nice guy. So, but I didn't. I, I I was in the same movie with him, but we weren't like you know yeah. just doing lines and cracking up and high fiving. So that's what would have been fun. Yeah. You've mentioned in your book, though, you, uh, uh, your uh, uh, work with Larry David, and uh, also uh, you, you worked with Joan Rivers. Both, two, I'm a yeah. huge fan of both of them. I'm just Joan Rivers is, I mean Don Rickles and Joan Rivers are, are a big deal to me. I just, you know, they're incredible. And uh, I thought the anecdotes about them were very funny. If you want to like touch on, thank them. you. It's in the book, and uh, Larry David and uh, Joan Rivers. Uh, is there anything you wanted to add to the to, to one of those anecdotes or anything you want to mention about them? Uh, well, people, if your listeners don't know the book, Joan Rivers was very nice, very nurturing. Uh, she played Kathy Griffin's mother, and um, and Larry David. I don't know which anecdotes you're referring to, but <laughs> I was intimidated by him. He's hey, good. Hey. <laughs> I would be. I would be. Yeah, he kind of, you know, it's just, hey, why did you do that? I mean, one time, I was t- he was telling me what should happen to city. He goes, you're not writing this down. Where's your pen? <laughs> that, he may be right. That thing's on a study I have on a waiter mm-hmm. that's another pen, you know. Sure. I go, write it down. Sure. But uh, no, it's it's sad that Joan Rivers died, and it sounds very like sad. she didn't have to. So, um she was very uh, nice. She wanted to call my mother and tell her she should be proud of me. Now, Fred, you, you joke a lot about your mother in your book. Does your does your mom like really like? See, I can't tell if you're joking, but does she like really? Does she really pick on you a little? I don't. Know if it's picking on me. It's more. Um, she's just very afraid and negative and worst case scenario. So growing up, she. She used to say, well, she just told me recently that when I went to, when she went to school, it was a nightmare. And when I was growing up, she was reliving the nightmare of school through me. So she insulted me growing <laughs> up as a nightmare. So she just, she's a good person, but very afraid and thinking, you're going to fail. If they don't like you, you'll be a street cleaner. So, so she's kind of a... Uh, so she's, she's mommy. She's like very protective. Protective and afraid, and yeah. and doesn't see the positive, and um, just uh, yeah. I, I was on Doctor Drew's wife has a show with psychics, uh-huh. and the psychic said Freddie's going to find true love, and and she was arguing with him. No, she's not. He's not. <laughs> He'll be the worst husband. He has no patience. Now, Fred, have, so, you, ever, have uh, you ever been married? No. No. No, I haven't either, Fred. So I, I, when people ask me that question, I just say, that's how it is, friends, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm a happy camper. <laughs> but, well, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> <laughs> but but you've been with some pretty attractive, good-looking girls, yeah, haven't you? Sure. Like, which is from stand-up, like after shows and stuff? Always after shows. <laughs> Never before a show. Or, or on stage. Or just. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, you mean, have I, have I <laughs> excuse me, been with attractive women? Yeah. Yeah, I've been with a few attractive women, you know. Right now I'm not, and, you know, so just in dribs and drabs sometimes, some older, so. Have you tried Tinder? Have I tried what? Tinder? No, I get Tinder and gr- Grinder and what are all these things? <laughs> well, they sound like restaurants. You yeah. threw me for a moment. Oh, well, see, Tinder's cool because yeah. um, they- you could swipe. Right, if you like somebody, or left, if you don't. But you know, it's harsh. You know, they could just be like, "Oh my God, that's the guy from Everybody Loves Raymond." I like him. You, you'd get like all these likes. There's a thumbs up and a thumbs down. There's no in between. But you don't see the thumbs down. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess I don't want them to go. Hey, here's that guy. (laughs) You know, Limber or whatever it's called. You know, yeah. It's just. uh, yeah, people tell me, oh, I saw Judy Tenuter on Match.com. And oh, Judy. I know there's no shame in it, but dating is stressful enough. I, I get as many ridiculous dates, just random stuff, rather than, you know, 
I don't know. Well, those blind um, dates, the uh, blind dates, I don't. I hate that. Your friends. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's all hard. Even even swiping, you know, would be stressful. Yeah. You know, just I, I hope that just bump into someone it makes sense, but nothing's making sense. So, um, you know, Fred. Last season we uh, interviewed uh, Angela, and uh, he was telling Angelo us, or Angelo who Angelo. Sarukas. Yeah, Sarukas. Sarukas. And he was telling us about Fred and Venny and how he was saying how that was like one of the most funnest times he had filming a movie. Uh, and a lot of people don't know it this. It was but, a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but you wrote Fred and Venny and it won a lot of awards. Oh, yeah, some little festivals and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Angelo, I became good friends with him. He's a great guy. Yeah. And uh, I, I I don't know if you remember this, but I, that was the first time I met you because I went to the premiere of it. At the, you went to, yes, Long Beach. Yeah, no, it was Newport Beach. Newport. Newport, Newport Beach, yes, in a mall, in some weird mall or something. And um, I remember, yeah, the sound wasn't good, but I remember you saying, so, okay, if I get your autograph, I like autographs. What I, is that? You collect autographs? I, I still do collect autographs, and that's kind of hard because I do stand up and whenever I do a show with somebody I always ask them for an autograph and they look at me like I'm unprofessional <laughs> I'm like oh, I, I just collect do you, every comedian you get you ask for their autographs yeah yeah I, I Jesus I, wow. I, I yeah. collect yeah. autographs it's, I have like everyone at Flappers you would ask their autograph no only only like the the yeah. main ones not like people who are struggling like me because you know <laughs> right. you know, have the struggling notebook like just have one as a backup. No. It's one of the struggling people. Did you get one's autograph? Yeah, I got his autograph wow. like wow. eight years ago. Jeez. Wow. So nice. the very first autograph I ever got was Spade's. And um, oh, where'd you see him? Well, see, Spade was on a show called Rules of Engagement, uh, which my uncle was on the show, and I went to a taping. That's right. And Spade was there, and my uncle was like, "My uncle, because Spade is." You know, I got the impression where he just likes to film and leave. You know what I mean? Like, I get the impression he's not a talkative guy. And Spade filmed Dickie Roberts, which I loved. And my, I was like, I don't know, 17 at the time. And my uncle was like, hey, can you just take a picture, you know, with my family? And Spade's like, okay, sure. And then I asked him for an autograph. And then he's all like, he's all like, Patrick, you said I'm only taking pictures. <laughs> right, right. So, but he was very nice. But, you know, whenever I see him now, you know. It's always high and by, you know. He's a very nice guy, but I just think he's not really talkative. You never asked Norm. Right, right. What's this? You never asked Norm for his autograph, did you? No, I did. You did? Oh, yeah, I that, find it funny. I'd be afraid to ask him. Well, that's... Who did you ask? I asked Norm, yeah. I remember nah, that. He, yeah, Norm, yeah, Norm's totally opposite from Spade. Norm talks to everybody. Oh, that's one. He's very nice. Yeah, and... Well, see, with Norm, what happened was I asked him for his autograph... And he said, sure. And then I was like, oh, can you make it out to Keith? He's like, sure. And then I was like, thank you very much. He's like, you don't talk much. I was like, oh, I have Asperger's. He's like, what's that? <laughs> so we just started talking. And, you know, Norm was very yeah. open to me. And he takes, I think Norm picks on people, but I think he does it in a loving way, you know? Right. Does he t- uh, how does he pick on you? Oh, he doesn't, like, pick on me per se, but, like, he'll be, he knows that I don't understand sarcasm. So, like, I remember one time I told him, I was like, hey, Norm, I had the best set ever at the Irvine Improv. And then he would talk to Kevin Farley and be like, hey, Kevin, Keith just had the best set ever at the Irvine Improv. <laughs> so you understand sarcasm if you just made that joke. Yeah, yeah but, I but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, you know, I, I wouldn't understand. I didn't understand it then. And then, like, you know, but he means it in a loving way. Like, I don't. I don't think he means it in a "Hey, f you" kind so, of way. So why, why, do you, why, besides the fact you have Asperger's, do you not understand sarcasm? That you take things literally. I take things too literally. I see. Yeah, I remember when uh, Fred was like, so Keith was telling me, you know, if my friend broke an ankle, I want to have empathy. It's like, no, I want it, but you know. I've, be like whatever you a little know? short on the empathy yeah i'm short on an empathy but i, I still would worry if it like yeah. it was my friend who broke his ankle i'd be like oh let's get you to a doctor can we stop by mcdonald's first <laughs> <laughs> is that ones. one of your jokes yeah 
Fred, you, that's not that's pretty good. Fred, yeah. Fred did stand up. You did stand up at my when I filmed my special at the Bray Amber. Yeah, and you did you did very well. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, Fred was going through. But, so that's that. So that's Asperger's. Oh, my friend hurt his ankles. Let's go to McDonald's first. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good. Yeah, because we need coffee. But no, that was awesome because when I filmed my special, that was my first special. Uh, hopefully it's not my last special because I really like comedy. But like I said, Fred, you were the first stand-up I ever saw on TV, and that just meant a lot to me that you were on that show. Oh, well, that's so nice to hear that. And you, I, and you killed it that night, too. You like, like, it was really tough going after you because I was like, oh, my God, Fred's hysterical. You know, like, much live yeah. is better than Talking TV. Talking about podcasts, I was watching uh, Norm MacDonald's podcast with Fred on it. Today. You're on that podcast. I was laughing my ass off. Yes, he. he, he well, I did Norm's podcast. He did. Yes. It is, it's, oh. it's it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And the one where I'm gone, or one where I called up at Ray Romano. Oh, that's it's right. That's right. Yeah. I. The only Norm podcast I watched was Spades and Adam Sandler's. Right, right, right. So, so you, you love those guys, huh? Yeah. I just think. Have you ever met Sandler? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I just think Sandler's just a good dude. Like, he's just very... Yeah, he is, he is. You know? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, I... Uh, have, you, have you got his autograph? I, no, I have not. I, <laughs> I didn't. S- no, I, I've, I saw him once, because he was an executive producer for Rules of Engagement, and he was filming this movie called Jack and Jill in the next lot, and I saw him, but he was all yeah. dressed up as a girl, and I didn't know it was yeah. him. And he totally, right. he was totally acting like it, he was a girl too. So I didn't, you know. But I walked. Was he out. acting sarcastic? No, he was just acting goofy. He was with um, okay. he, he was with uh, Katie Holmes, I think. Right, 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 yeah. right. I got her autograph. <laughs> wow, you got a good collection. Yeah, and I got Fred's. Here you go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Long Beach Film Festival. No, no, uh, Newport. What was it? Long Beach. Newport, Newport. Orange County. Oh, yeah, yeah, God. So, Fred, we got Chili. we got another Twitter sure. question. Uh, and I think I accidentally deleted it. I accidentally deleted it. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Oh, well, let me guess what they would ask. Uh, it's, I don't know. Dumb and Dumber. Do you get Dumb and Dumber know. questions a lot? No, nah, not too much. That was a long time ago. It's weird. Um, did they ever offer you to be in the sequel, like to play that joke again? That would have been funny. No, there's, there's no payphones anymore. That's true. Oh, it, w- it wouldn't make sense. It's true. You know, to do that scene again, yeah. But, that would have been fun, but no, nah, I wasn't in it. Uh, that's that's true. Payphones are gone. iPhones. You, you could be like, get off the iPhone. <laughs> We're talking about this technology. Uh, Fred, what, what, do you have any opinions on the overall... Uh, Inter- internet situation that's uh, good for comedians in general, and uh, just uh, you know, doing your own acts and putting them uh, out there—that's uh, kind of cool. Wait, wait, I'm confused. You mean where people do their own acts and they put it on the internet? Yeah, you know how how people have started in some cases uh, out of their own apartments. I went to this. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know what I couldn't even on. believe this <laughs> thing. You know, you couldn't even tell where where it was. She lit it up. I don't even know what's going on. I see a Barnes and Noble book <laughs> signing by Jerry Shemmy and big YouTube stars. Yeah, big, yeah. And, I, I, uh, and then someone at the Grove. That's so and so. He's a big Instagram star. So <laughs> I don't. Crazy? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's so crazy. Uh, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I try. Like I try to like tweet links. Hey, listen to my podcast and. Yeah, no one cares. So, uh, I, I, I it's everyone thinks, oh, this is going to go viral. Oh sure. yeah. Now, Fred, do you like? Did you have fun doing a podcast? Because I, I have fun doing it, but then like, there's times where like, I'm like, oh, nobody. I feel like maybe no one might be listening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did, do yeah, you that's that's a, that's a good point because you're in a vacuum. You know, I feel I reach more people on Facebook. Going, hey, and they go, I like that. So. I did have fun. I had some great conversations, you know, Norm called and, and you and others, but it's just too much of a headache to bother people. Go, will you be on it? And there's no money. And so 
Yeah, it's. I guess if you Adam Carolla, you make millions, or one of these guys like Bert Kreischer, everyone has a big following. But for me, it was like I had fun doing them, but not enough to do it every week. Yeah, I get that because I I'm having fun doing the podcast. Just it just sucks because like I only want to talk to you know comedians I like and respect and stuff. You know what I mean? And yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it, if you do it every week, it, it's hard to keep. You know, yeah, that standard. Yeah, and it's tough because they're like. One time, I asked uh, this guy. I won't say names or whatever. But he's like, "How many listeners do you have?" I was like, "Oh, five. He's like, "Excellent, five thousand. I'll do it." I was like, "No, I'm at five. My mom, my dad, and my sisters." Wow. So he was like, oh, I won't do it anymore. Are you sure you don't have more than five? No, no. The, 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 this season I have more. But six this, was, right. this, this was the first season. Oh, so, yeah, the first one, you always start with five, yeah. Yeah, especially on the premiere when you don't have a huge fan base. But see, I'm kind of like you. I just want to make people laugh, and I'm not really into networking. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So we have a question about this Kathy Griffin thing. You, uh-huh. Yeah, so did you really uh, hook up with her? Yeah, in 1992. She was hooking up with a lot of guys, so it's not like I'm bragging. <laughs> she, I was, it was, she was very selective. But um, I uh, I did. Yes, I did. One night. Oh, very good. Very uh, good. So, like, was that a girlfriend thing or a one-night stand type thing? Or... It was, it was more like a one night stand. Uh, I think we had one other date that went worse than the one night stand. So, <laughs> yeah, it was no, not a girlfriend. You know what's so weird too is because like she's very, she like sells out all these shows and she only does stand up like once a month. So it's she's a popular. I think people people find her you know over the top. Yeah, but I don't know why is that so weird. Because I just I just know her from stand up. I don't know her from anything else, you know. She does a New Year's does she do that New Year's thing where they drop the ball in New York? You know, Fred is from New York. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't watch New Year's. Yeah, she does that band as a creeper. What's this? What's that? She does that, yeah, the yeah, with New Year's Eve. The yeah. New Year's Eve thing, yeah, that's where I, I, I know her a lot from. <laughs> I thought he called Alan a creeper. I was no, just no, like, no, 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 he, no, no, no. What do you, no. what do you find different uh, that you could elucidate on between Los Angeles, uh, since you've been living in both places, and New York? Any any comments that uh, you'd like to make about the two different settings? Uh, it's been so long since I've been to New York, but just the mm. obvious that it's so in your face and everyone everywhere. And I think they're younger in New York. People start their careers there, and then they come here. Mm. So it's sort of like, uh, hey, I'm starting. I'm in New York. Sure. So it's too fast-paced to... Uh, uh, I like it better here. Do you? Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Me too. I, I love L.A. Now, now Fred, you, you just started doing stand-up again within the past two years. Are you still going at it, or is it just something you do to do? Mm, yeah, I'm just dabbling. I, I'm going to open for Norman Atlanta in, in, in next month, so just dabbling. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's, that's great. cool. Yeah. What, was, what city was that again? Uh, you want to plug that? Atlanta. Okay. It'll be in Atlanta. Yeah. Great. See, the thing is, like, idiot. Norm is like, he'll offer you a job, and then you'll say, okay, and then you'll call and see what's going on, because he, he said I could do Vegas, I was like, okay, so I've been trying to get on the phone with him to do Vegas. So I don't know. Am I going to Vegas just to go there? You know what I'm saying? I get... Wait, wait, wait. Were you opening for him in Vegas? Well, he said he said I could do Vegas with him. So I don't know if that's a yes or a no. And when's the date? I think it's on Friday. Well, then maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. yeah, if he didn't get back to you, I'd just okay. make up the plans for this Friday. I know, so I don't know if I should just go in there, like, or just not go, or, you know, I don't know. I'm not very good at this things. And he's not the best texting you back type of guy, either. Right, right. Well, He does I, that to I you, say, too, though, didn't you? You told me he does that to you, right? Right. So, yeah, unless you have the ticket and everything, 
I'd say, yeah, don't, don't go to Vegas. Were you just going to just walk around Las Vegas looking for him? Or do you know what club he's at? Oh, no, I know what club he's at. That's easy to find. But, right. But, you know, like, I was thinking that, you know, if I have the job, stay there the three days. If not, stay there for a night because it's just a night in Vegas. You could drive back, you know? I don't know. So it's just a one night job? No, I think he's doing three shows, but. You know, I don't know. Like, I texted him. I was like, hey, am I still doing Vegas with you? And uh, he hasn't responded, but it said he read it. So, you know. He said he read it. What do you mean? Uh, Your iPhone will tell you if you read a message or not. Like, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, when I text you, it tells me when you read my messages. I don't have that with people. Jeez. Yeah. So. Mm. But it's kind of scary. But, you know, he's like I said, it's not like. You know, but you told me he ignores you all the time too. So I'm like, huh. well, yeah. Did I say that, or just that you can't? You know. Yeah. He he said at the improv, you're you're like uh, you're oh, like yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. When he was on the podcast, yeah. Yeah, you're like Norm ignores me all the time too. He only calls me when he wants something or something. I was like, oh. No, I didn't say that. I said <laughs> you, you you call him, yeah, because he called him up. Yeah. You know. No, we just text. That's what I meant. We don't have phone calls. Mm. All right. Well, Fred, thanks so much for doing the podcast. No, it was, it was great. Yeah, this was and, fantastic, uh, guy. We really appreciate it. We let me know when the link is up and just keep me posted, you guys. Yeah. Any other questions, Alan Lee? No, I. You know, I. I, I love the book. I'm going to tell you that right now. And uh, I I'm, thank you so much. Oh, about the book, I wanted to tell a quick Fred Stoller story about this book because no one believes me. But Fred was doing a book thing in Huntington Beach. Are you still doing book tours with a with a book? Maybe one more, but with yeah, something book soup in LA at store. But I, I think I'm kind of done right That's now. That's a great venue. One or two that, more. That, it's a great venue. Over there. Is that on Sunset or the one? Uh, no, the one in Hun- Ye- oh, the yeah, Huntington. Sunset Boulevard. Well, he's yes, the one in Sunset soup. near the Comedy Store. Oh, exactly. Well, well, he did one in Huntington Beach at Bella Terra, which I live. Sure, you live down there. I live like yeah. two minutes away. But this is the Hollywood one. Yeah. But yeah I think it's, it's a great, great deal to go there. And but Fred there. texted me and he said, I'm going to be in Huntington Beach. Will you go? And I said, sure. Yeah. Me and my friend Megan went. Oh. And I felt so bad because it was like dead. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like not even the, I'm not just talking about the bookstore, but we went to the movies and the Cheesecake Factory. It was just dead in the shopping center. So I just felt, felt horrible. Megan bought two books. Very nice of her. Yeah. So, but she loves you, and thank you so much. All right. Well, Fred, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Thank man. you, guys. Thank and you. Have fun, and uh, I'll see you around the circuit. Definitely. All right, buddy. Take care. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Well, I'm so glad we had him on. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I'm going to re- uh, say that. Repeat. Anyone who wants to read about comedy and character acting should definitely pick up uh, Fred's book. Maybe we'll have you back. The Life of a Perennial TV Guest Star. I, I'm very impressed with this book, and I recommend it to anyone out there. Uh, it was a good book. And uh, that's the problem with phone interviews. Like, um, What's that? I can't believe I accidentally deleted that tweet. Well, your finger slipped there, you know, and, uh, you know. Yeah, I, you know. Well, you, you, well it just that it happens, you know. Uh, hey. At least we didn't delete something something else like uh like uh <laughs> like a Starbucks coupon thing. Yeah. That could have fucked up the whole evening. It's interesting how he has a lot of Norm stories. He knows Norm very yeah. well. And I, I, I tell you, you know, Fred is very seasoned. He knows a lot of people and goes way back. Well, you know what I what I think it is, I think because I think everyone knows Norm's my hero and I open up for him yeah. every now and then. Sure. I think uh you know, I think everyone just assumes that that's all I want to talk about, and it's not what I want to talk I, about. I, I don't think. I think it's a great deal. I think you, you, you and Norm have a great relationship, and uh, yeah, as you know, <laughs> yeah. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I wanted to talk about the. Oh, I wanted to ask him a question about Drake Slayer. Drake Slayer was on the Young Comedians. Uh, that the Young Comedians podcast. Sure, and um, he. Die, he died. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know? that's it. Yeah. And, and you were going to ask. I'm just curious. You were going to ask uh, something about uh, 
the comedian. Yeah, like what's it like working with him? Because I never got a chance to meet. Like he's a he's a guy whose autograph I would have liked to have. Mm. Mm. You know, like he was um, very. He was very uh, very funny. Like one of his. This is the best joke I've ever heard. Uh, one of the jokes is um, so I was shaving the other day and I cut my Adam's apple. Oh. Yeah, and I got apple juice everywhere. <laughs> Like that's, yeah, that's you know that's a funny joke because I like that you know yeah. and I'll, it's yeah. dark too. Oh, that's oh, what so I wanted a little to dark, ask. A little dark because I, I that's what I wanted to ask Fred is if uh, he was a dark comic because a lot of people said he was. And I, stuff. I, I've, I've heard no, you know, on that podcast with Norm, he, he that's brought up. You know, oh, it is a little bit. It's, it's touched on y'all. Yeah. Norm is. Uh, uh, talking about some jokes about la and uh, anyway so uh you're, you're you're on this vegas thing and and, and uh well we don't know that we don't know that and and, and uh, we'll, well that see. that's what i was saying i was thinking just we still got three minutes yeah yeah you know. i i looked at the wrong time when i told fred i had to go but um i could kill three minutes let's raise a riffs right not raise a get off early <laughs> <laughs> but no that's what i was saying like you know like, I tried calling him, texting him, you know, so I'll try maybe one more time on Thursday, you know, and then we'll just go there for a day. If not, say hi, go back. Hey, we love Vegas. Yeah, it's just one. It's not like it's it's not like it's Florida, you know what I mean? Like, that would be <laughs> weird. But Vegas, I think it's not weird because everyone goes to Vegas all the time. We can uh, have a nice meal there. And, yeah, it's uh, like San Diego when we went down to San Diego. Oh, that was a blast. Yeah, you know, it's, that was a blast. It's not that bad because it's no. it's literally driving distance. Like if it's it was like, Atlanta, I like the ride. <laughs> I like the ride to Vegas. Oh yeah, it will be fun. Some and people we die could, too. Yeah, and you're coming with me. I you should be my am. carpool buddy because I'm certainly glad well, to. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but um, I was driving on the road once and I fell asleep. I got in a car accident. You're so lucky. Yeah, and my car flipped and tumbled I just, like 15, I just, 20 times. Oh, my God. You Almost know, uh, died. Only thing that happened to me, not even a scratch. Uh, not, nothing. Nothing, you know? Wow. So I was like, save the save the day. Hey, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm surprised you didn't Facebook the picture of the car. I did. Did you? Because I, I did. missed that. I actually did not see that. I did. It got like a thousand likes, and everyone's like, oh, sweet. I was like, I almost died. I wow. And they still liked it. <laughs> you know? And then I realized, see, that's oh. The com- I- that's the comedy world. Dark. But then it's like, yeah. But it's then like, I only have a thousand <laughs> friends, and it's like, you almost liked it because. I, I didn't rare. see that, for heaven's sake. You'll have to. I want to see, the, I want to see that picture. Yeah. Well, guys, it's. I'm- it's so We're dark. running out of time, man. Alan, anything you want to say before we head off? To uh... Uh, I want to wish everyone out there uh, a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. Tonight was fun. The season, I think this and season is going to be a lot better than last season, only I, because we're getting people who respect the art of interviewing more. Yeah, Does that I, make sense? I think I think the, I, I love the last season, so it's very really oh, yeah. hard. It's very hard for me to compare or, or be judgmental. I, I had such a blast. But you want to make season. the seasons better, yeah, So yeah, you I get know. picked up again. So yeah, but I'm saying here's I'm saying, what you need to do. We're, Everyone we're, who listened to this show, retweet it to all your friends, yeah, Facebook yeah. it, watch it. You know, get us some sure. ratings because we have to beat ratings from season one to come back for season three. Not saying well, we want to do that's season true. three, you're, but you're, we wanted to say, hey, we're awesome. Right. Even if it's just the two of us here saying it to each other. Exactly. And I want to thank uh, Fred Stoller, guys. Hey, Fred. Thank you so much, man. Uh, You're the bomb, dude. Buy his book. Uh, maybe we'll have you back. Barnes and Nobles. It's only twenty bucks. It's really. Funny. We'll have you back if we're back. <laughs> That's what the maybe was. Yeah, it's a really funny book. And um, watch his movie, oh, Fred and right Venny, on Netflix. Which I want to see. Yeah, very good. Very smartly written too. Uh, next week, join us. We'll have Jeff Richards in the house. And He'll actually be in the studio because I'm giving him a ride. Uh, Jeff Richards is from Saturday Night Live and Mad TV, and we'll talk it's about the be a blast. Yeah, we'll talk about the differences in those departments. Other than that, Alan Lee. Yeah, man. Say your goodbyes. Twitter. Have a good night. 
Alan Lee had a Twitter called Follow Me Alan Lee at, com, at Commie or whatever, but he doesn't go on Twitter, so I think <laughs> they deleted his Twitter. Well, I'll just open another one with oh. your help. All right, we'll do All that. All right, man. And I'm Keith Reza. Follow me at Keith Reza. Thanks for supporting the show, guys, and have a good night. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.